Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman and this is part 4 in my response to Zero Point UFO about chemtrailing. In this section we're going to look at clouds, chemtrails and changing sky conditions. Zero Point UFO continues I feel that your comment regarding the intermittent stopping and starting of the trails is not very convincing at all. What you are basically saying is that an aeroplane is flying about producing contrails that rival the enormity of the clouds. Your statement about the plane flying through changing conditions doesn't sit well because the consistency of the trails does not suggest the plane went through a gradual change in weather conditions. There's no way a jet is going to produce that larger trail one second and nothing the next. The changing humidity should be reflected as a gradual change in the trail's transparency. Okay, so my response to that, oh really? So how do you account for patchy cloudy skies? Why are there clouds with gaps between them? Why is it that when we watch time-lapse videos of clouds we see them appearing and disappearing as if forming from nothing and disappearing into nothing? What causes that? If the temperature and humidity conditions in the sky were as uniform as Zero Point UFO would have us believe, we would either see all cloud or no cloud. A visit to flightradar24.com will show that the cruising speed of aircraft at high altitude is approximately 550 to 650 miles an hour. At 600 miles an hour, an aircraft is travelling through the air at 10 miles per minute, or 52,800 feet per minute, or 880 feet per second. At 880 feet per second, an aircraft is moving through a lot of sky in a very short period of time. Of course, the atmospheric conditions that the aircraft is passing through may vary considerably depending on the temperature and humidity at the time. This is why genuine contrails will appear to start and stop. Just as we see in this image by MrNeil.com Description The sunrise picture is punctuated by the contrails of several eastbound airplanes which left San Francisco International Airport 20 or so minutes earlier. Contrail formation is dependent on various factors such as temperature, humidity, etc. These factors are not necessarily constant throughout the sky. There may be patches or layers of sky where the temperature is lower or higher. For example, one patch of sky may contain the conditions that allow contrail formation, while another, just a few miles ahead, might not. An aircraft passing through these patches might leave a contrail while the first one, which would then appear to turn off as it passed into the second. An aircraft travelling through a number of these patches will leave a contrail that appears to be broken in places. Alternatively, a contrail may begin as unbroken, but different weather conditions along the contrail may cause the contrail to disperse more quickly in certain places, while not in others, again leaving a broken contrail effect. Zero Point UFO continues. It's all controlled and the pilots have been briefed. It's time to open your mind. What kind of extreme atmospheric conditions do you think would cause a plane to create such clouds that linger in the sky for periods of up to 24 hours when no other natural cloud formations are present? Mother Nature ought to put Qantas on the payroll. I live near an airport, Dazza. I've never seen contrails formed on the runway during takeoff that lasted all day and night. Nor have I seen steam from a car exhaust linger motionless in the air. I can make a clear distinction between a chemtrail and a contrail. Aluminium oxide nanoparticles behave much differently to water vapour in the atmosphere. Water dissipates in a uniform manner over a short period of time. However, chemtrails remain clearly visible throughout the entire day and night of changing temperatures and weather conditions. Moreover, chemtrails don't bond to the clouds in the same way condensation bonds to condensation. Surely you must acknowledge the clear differences in appearance alone. You are suggesting that water vapour as contrails are identical to water vapour as clouds, aren't you? You're an astronomer, Dazza. Surely you have noticed how long it takes for this stuff to clear out of the sky? Zero Point UFO claims it's all controlled and the pilots have been briefed. Again, we need to take a look at Flight Radar 24 and consider how many flights are in the sky at any time and how many pilots would have to be in on this global conspiracy. Here we are on flightradar24.com looking at all the aircraft that are in the airspace above the United States at the moment. And uh, the chemtrail believers would have us believe that every one of these pilots, every one of the co-pilots, the cabin crew, 
are all in on this global conspiracy of chemtrailing. And not only that, but uh, all of these aircraft that we see on the screen and all of the rest of the aircraft around the world are all part of a global conspiracy that is supplied with chemtrails that have to be refueled and then you've got the ground support crew, uh, you've got the tanker drivers, you've got the people loading it, you've got the people manufacturing it, you've got the people transporting it, supplying it. This would be a massive conspiracy and there would be whistleblowers all over the place. Oh, don't tell me, they're all being killed. The next point of Zero Point UFO's uh, statement we'll look at is where he says, What kind of extreme atmospheric conditions do you think will cause a plane to create such clouds that linger in the sky for periods of up to 24 hours when no other natural cloud formations are present? End quote. My response, again, it all comes down to the temperature and the humidity, that is the presence of water vapour, conditions at the time. Zero Point UFO says, quote, Mother Nature ought to put Qantas on the payroll, end quote. My response, I'll take that as evidence that you're admitting that you believe that these chemtrails are being sprayed by passenger aircraft such as Qantas and not just purpose-built so-called chem tankers. Indeed, the aircraft in your video appears to be a Qantas 747. Zero Point goes on to say, I live near an airport, Gaza. I've never seen contrails formed on the runway during takeoff that lasted all day and night, nor have I seen steam from a car exhaust linger motionless in the air. My response, of course not, but then it is generally not well below freezing at ground level as it is at high altitude. Check out the temperatures and humidity at high altitude from these daily weather balloon soundings. So here is the website for the University of Wyoming College of Engineering Department of Atmospheric Science and on this map um, you can select any of the locations. These are for, from weather balloons, okay? So we can select any of these. Let's uh, grab this one here for example and we'll check out the soundings. This is going up through the atmosphere. Now one of the common mistakes that people make is that they think, wow it's hot on the ground so how can there be contrails high in the sky if it's so hot on the ground it's too hot for contrails to form? Um, well that's not the case. So this is from Denver, observations on the 8th of July 2014. It's the latest, you can go back, you can check any of the others. If you think I'm lying just check it out for yourself and uh, check out the results. Okay so here is the height in meters and here is the, the temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay. So we can see that um, at 1,625 meters, um, the temperature was 34.4 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm. Okay, but then as we go up through the atmosphere, as the weather balloon goes up through the atmosphere, we can see that the temperature is dropping. And then when we get up to about 5,000 meters, uh, remember there's about 3.3 feet uh, per meter if you want to convert that into feet. Um, then we're down to zero degrees Celsius, around about 5,000 meters. Now, if you're using Celsius, zero degrees Celsius is when water will freeze. And as we go up through the atmosphere, and the average cruising altitude of an aircraft, I think, is around about 37,000 feet. That's somewhere around about 11,000 meters from uh, from memory. So here we go, 11,500 meters and we see that the temperature is minus 48.7 degrees Celsius so it's well below freezing and this is even though down uh, closer to the ground it was 34.4 degrees Celsius and now we're looking at um, nearly minus 50 degrees Celsius and as we go up higher you can see it gets even colder. Now zero point UFO continues, quote, I can make a clear distinction between a chemtrail and a contrail, end quote. My response, really, I'm still wondering how you made this distinction in your video of a 747 aircraft that you called, quote, HD, we're being sprayed, chemtrail in progress, Taylor's Hill, 15th May 2014, end quote. So just how did you come to that conclusion? How did you come to the conclusion that these are actually chemtrails and not contrails? They're forming behind the engines just as a contrail should do. But you announce and declare that these are chemtrails. Well, where is your proof that these are chemtrails? Zero Point UFO continues, quote, Aluminium oxide nanoparticles behave much differently to water vapour in the atmosphere. 
Water dissipates in a uniform manner over a short period of time. However, chemtrails remain clearly visible throughout the entire day of changing temperatures and weather conditions, end quote. Really? You mean like clouds do? Guess what? Contrails are the same as clouds. They are water vapour. That's right, clouds are water vapour, just like contrails. Contrails are water vapour. Zero Point continues, moreover, chemtrails don't bond to the clouds in the same way condensation bonds to condensation. Surely you must acknowledge the clear differences in appearance alone. My response? No. You are the one making the assertion that they are in fact chemtrails instead of contrails, not me. Zero Point continues. You are suggesting that water vapour as contrails are identical to water vapour as clouds, aren't you? End quote. My response? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Water vapour is water vapour, whether it be in natural clouds, or produced as contrails from an aircraft engine, or from your breath on a cold winter's day. The difference in the appearance is shape. I wouldn't expect an aircraft to leave a trail of small or large puffy clouds instead of a long, mostly well-defined trail. Your comparison of the appearance is just silly and logical. Zero Point continues, quote, You're an astronomer, Dazza. Surely you have noticed how long it takes for this stuff to clear out from the sky? End quote. My response. Ask any astronomer and they will tell you how fast cloud can clear out and disappear, or worse, suddenly appear out of nowhere. On our public viewing nights at the observatory, as well as any night we're viewing, of course, it is often amazing just how fast the sky can suddenly clear from horizon to horizon, and it is equally frustrating how cloud cover can suddenly appear out of nowhere. Often we see conditions where the cloud cover comes and goes several times in an evening. It is every astronomer's frustration, but it is also true that the cloud cover can linger for hours or even days. We call this weather. Zero Point continues, quote, Let's recap. Have I shown you how it is possible for trails not only to form behind the engines, but how the engines themselves can actually play a role in the production of aluminium oxide? And, have I provided backup to my claims that we are being sprayed? Have I answered your questions? I think so. Let's call it a chat. End quote. My response to Zero Point? No, you haven't on either count. All you have done is to show me how you have completely fallen for the trimethyl aluminium TMA hoax by simply copying and pasting conspiracy nonsense without doing your own background research into those claims. In fact, the irony is that I had not heard of trimethyl aluminium TMA claims before this and was none the wiser until I had to do my own research in response to your claims. I'm sure that you will agree that highly volatile and explosive trimethyl aluminium TMA is certainly completely unsuitable as an additive to aircraft fuel or as a chem spray on its own as it bursts into flames on contact with air or water and must be handled with extreme caution. So no, you have not shown me, quote, how it is possible for trails not only to form behind the engines but how the engines themselves can actually play a role in the production of aluminium oxide, end quote. At the end of the day, all you've shown me is a video of a Qantas 747 leaving a genuine and normal condensation trail as the warm, moist air hits the cold air at altitude. And as we see, the contrails appear slightly behind the engines, exactly as they should. You have not shown me anything to support your claim that the 747 you filmed was in fact spraying you with chemicals as you claimed in the title and description of your video, unless the chemical you were being sprayed with was H2O or water. Zero Point UFO closes her statement by asking, quote, Have I answered your questions? I think so. Let's call it a chat. End quote. My response? Have I answered your questions, Zero Point UFO? I think so. Sorry you had to wait so long, but let's call it a slam dunk, shall we? As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X, Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. And remember to subscribe if you'd like updates. If you'd like to support my work by making a small donation, or even a large one, please click the PayPal button on the About tab on my channel. Your support will be most appreciated. Thank you for watching.